Netanyahu, he calls him a war criminal, says he's not going to attend. Bernie Sanders is parroting the talking points of Hamas. Being a real, genuine friend of Israel means to push Israel to put an end to this war. Being a genuine friend of Israel who cares about its future means put pressure on Israel to put an end to the apartheid and to the occupation. Nothing but this. What the Americans are doing and others is, you know, like a drug addict. Supply the drug addict with more money. He will be very happy about it. He will buy more drugs. But that's not friendship and that's not care. Well, the US is certainly intent on enabling the drug addict. In this case, uh, using Gideon Levy's analogy here, we're talking about Israel and its addiction to US bombs uh, that it's currently dropping on Gaza. Now, Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson is already attacking Jewish American Senator Bernie Sanders for refusing to attend a speech that a foreign government's foreign leader plans to give during a joint session of Congress. Of course, I'm talking about Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, before we get to Johnson's statements against Bernie, here's the context. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who funded the terrorist group Hamas and is now overseeing a genocide in Gaza, has accepted an invitation to speak during a joint session of Congress. He was invited by Mike Johnson in the House, and then later Chuck Schumer, a Democrat, in the Senate. He's the Senate Majority Leader. Now, Chuck Schumer engaging in this invitation is hilarious, considering the fact that he literally gave this speech on the Senate floor. The fourth major obstacle to peace is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has all too frequently bowed to the demands of extremists like ministers Smotrich and Ben Gavir and the settlers in the West Bank. At this critical juncture, I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. Netanyahu is elated by the opportunity to engage in propaganda here on US soil. He said so on X, writing, I'm thrilled by the privilege to represent Israel before both houses of Congress and to represent what he refers to as the truth about our just war against those seeking our lives to be to the representative war against those seeking our lives to the representatives of the American people and the entire world. Obviously, he wrote a statement in Hebrew and it was translated, which is why grammatically it's a little strange, but you get the gist of the statement there. Now, Bernie Sanders is understandably against this, especially considering the fact that there are possible warrants at play for people like Netanyahu in the Israeli government over war crimes that have been committed. That's according to the International Court. Uh, the International Criminal Court. So Bernie Sanders writes, Netanyahu is a war criminal. He should not be invited to address a joint meeting of Congress. I certainly will not attend. He continues in this lengthy thread writing, Israel does not have the right to kill more than 34,000 civilians. It does not have the right to orphan 19,000 children. It does not have the right to annihilate Gaza's healthcare system, knocking 26 hospitals out of service and killing more than 400 healthcare workers. It most certainly does not have the right to block humanitarian aid from coming in to the desperate people of Gaza, creating the conditions for starvation and famine. This is a clear violation of American and international law. But as we've learned, if Israel's doing it, it's totally fine. There are other Democrats who say that they're considering not attending the speech. I don't like wishy-washy answers, but these are the people who are saying this. You have Representative Hank Johnson from Georgia, Representative Maxwell Frost, I would be surprised if he attended, and Representative Jan Schakowsky. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. Bernie lived on a kibbutz. The only connection Mike Johnson has to Israel is APAC checks. And if Hamas was giving those checks instead of APAC, Mike Johnson would invite the leader of Hamas to Congress and give him standing ovations. He doesn't care about Israel, other than, of course, he's a lunatic evangelical. So he's hoping that Israel captures the West Bank and Gaza Strip, in other words, from the river to the sea, and then murders enough Muslims to stop start Armageddon. Apocalypse, where Jesus comes and kills us all in his lunatic interpretation of Christianity. So that's who Mike Johnson is. 
he doesn't care about Israel at all. His best case scenario is we want Israel to kill all the Muslims before Jesus comes and kills all the Jews. So, wow, what an ally you have in Mike Johnson. But hey, as long as the APAC checks clear, everybody is going to do standing ovations for a butcher. So, and that is going to be a seminal moment because he's definitely going to come. And they're definitely going to give him standing ovation after standing ovation. All the good and decent people will, of course, not be at the speech led by Bernie Sanders. Uh, and part of the reason Bernie Sanders is not going to speech is not just because of the Palestinians that have been slaughtered, as he explains, but because it doesn't help Israel to celebrate and basically the equivalent of a serial killer. And it is going to reveal to the American people, for at least those that are paying attention, who our Congress is. Everyone attending that speech has no morals at all, none. They're all going to give standing ovations to a butcher. And look, I just look, if they're gonna attend, I agree with you. I, I don't wanna hear about how moral they are, how much they care about humanitarian rights or, or human rights, I should say. And I certainly don't wanna hear them criticize the lack of human rights in any other country. Like they have no leg to stand on. Right? Yeah, like what course, like who they're... are you to judge the morality or the human rights abuses of another country as you sit there filleting a war criminal? Yeah, there's no question about that. The hypocrisy will be through the roof. It's I mean, look, this is a funny equivalent, but it is. If there was ASPAC, American Syrian Public Affairs Committee, and they were giving a hundred million dollars in this election cycle, Mike Johnson, Chuck Schumer, and the rest would invite Bashar al-Assad to Congress and give him a standing ovation. Listen, and that's a really good point. I wish you hadn't have called it ASPAC. No, I know. I did not <laughs> Why'd you do that? <laughs> no, because it, because it, Israel is in the name of APAC and no one bothers, like not a single reporter has ever noted that. Mm -hmm. Oh, This is to literally to serve a foreign government. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you call it ASPAC, people go, whoa, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, American Syrian Public Affairs Committee. Well, that would be showing their ass to Bashar Assad. Mm -hmm. And it's the same exact thing for APAC. If that hurts your feelings, oh no, Syrians are evil and despicable Muslims. Israel is beloved, blah, 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 right? Sorry, one butchered his own people, the other one butchered the Palestinian people. And might have even allowed October 7th. I mean, he, but Netanyahu knew October 7th was coming and didn't do anything about it. That's part of why he's unpopular in Israel. In Israel, unfortunately, Popular opinion doesn't think that they went too far in Gaza at all, right. at all. But they do think that Netanyahu exposed them to the attack on October 7th. Now, I wanna go to what Mike Johnson said about Bernie protesting Netanyahu's speech before a joint session of Congress. He did so during an interview on Sunday on Fox News. Let's take a look. Bernie Sanders is parroting the talking points of Hamas and the Ayatollah in Iran. If that's the side he wants to choose, so be it. Our Democrat colleagues have to make a choice. Are they going to stand with our most important ally in the Middle East at this most desperate time, as has traditionally been the case in Washington? We've had bipartisan agreement that we have to stand in solidarity with Israel. Or are they gonna take this new side and stand with Hamas and, and uh, the Ayatollah? Bernie Sanders has chosen a side. I hope that our other colleagues in the Democrat uh, party will, will stand up and do the right thing. Well, according to Mike Johnson's uh, standards here, the international community is parroting Hamas talking points. Yeah, because the international community all says take the goddamn deal. It's definitely the right deal. Yeah, they want to cease yeah. fire, and they see what they see the atrocities being carried out by the Israeli defense forces in Gaza, and they're horrified. Yeah, well, listen, look, guys. Like, if you haven't figured out that Mike Johnson's a useless uh, servant of the rich and the lobbyists, you've got a lot of education coming your way. So, but he's using super harsh words, saying that uh, Bernie Sanders is in favor of the Ayatollah in Iran and Hamas. So am I allowed to use equally harsh words? I think Mike Johnson is dripping in blood that he's helped to slaughter so many Palestinians that whenever I look at Mike Johnson, I see blood dripping from his face. And that part is real, 36,000 dead, either burned alive or crushed by uh, concrete. So that's who Mike Johnson is, he's a despicable human being. And, it, and Israel did 30 times the terrorism of Hamas. And he thinks that's our most important ally, the one who butchered 25,000 innocent women and children. Imagine a stadium full of people 
And imagine Mike Johnson giving a standing ovation to the serial killer who murdered everyone in the building. And that's who Mike Johnson is. So I'm not at all surprised, but, but it's not just Mike Johnson. Every Democrat and every Republican that gives that butcher a standing ovation is the most immoral son of a bitch you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And it is about 85 to 90% of the United States Congress. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.